but here is your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're going to connect the van up to your vehicle, you want to reverse up. You can use the jockey wheel to raise and lower the hitch. So you can lower it down onto your tow wall and then this black handle will lock itself down. And just up here, this wee button will raise up and there'll be a green ring so you know it's locked onto your tow ball correctly. You can then push down your secondary lever. There are some Alfa brake pads in here that will squeeze in onto the tow ball. You've got a breakaway cable. So this is designed to wrap around the base of the tow ball and clip back onto itself. This just sits underneath here so that if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, this will pull, it'll snap off and it'll put your handbrake on. You've got a standard 7 pin trailer plug here. You do also have this additional auxiliary cord. This is designed so that you can wire these two cords together and have a 12 pin trailer plug so you can run the fridge as you tow. But we'll go into that more when we get to your fridge. Your handbrake, just like a car. Push down for off, pull up for on. Once you've got your hitch all hooked up, you'll need to get your jockey wheel out of the way. So you want to wind it up so that these arms slide up into these grooves on the side here. It might be a wee bit difficult to see, but there's a groove on each side. The arm will slot up into there and that just stops the wheel from spinning around as you tow the van. You can then undo this handle here and pull the whole jockey wheel unit up so the wheel sits against your A-frame. You can then tighten that up out of the way. When you go to unhook the van from your vehicle, you'll do that in reverse. So undo that handle, drop the jockey wheel down, tighten it up, put your handbrake on, lift this lever, and then you have to lift and hold this first lever while you wind the jockey wheel up. If you don't hold this handle up, it won't release your tow ball, it'll just pull it up with your lever. So just in behind your A-frame here is your front locker. So there's space on the left here for two 9 kilo gas bottles. So it's just sort of a standard barbecue spin-on connection. If for some reason you ever want to turn the gas off entirely at the source, you can just flip this wee yellow lever around and that'll shut your gas line off. Just make sure you open it back up again when you go to use it. You've got your leg winder in here. So this is to wind up and down the stabilizers. You have one on each corner of the van. And then you've also got your mains power cord for when you're plugging in at a campground. Now you will notice in the corners of your front locker you've got sort of grates, so it is open to the elements. So you don't want to store anything in here that you don't want getting sort of dusty or damp. These front lockers do also have a weight limit of sort of 20 to 23 kilos, so just make sure you don't overload it as it will affect the towing of the van. So just up on the side of your van here, this is the vent for when you're running your water heater on gas. You only need to take this travel cover off when you're actively running the water heater on gas. It's a really good idea to keep this on, uh, especially when you're traveling, but also when you're not using it. Just keeps any dust and dirt from getting in there, as well as spiders, as they create webs and it really affects the ignition of your water heater. When you go to put this back on, just clip it through the top and then give it a wee knock at the bottom. Just next to that here is your housing unit for your freshwater barrel. So you've got your freshwater barrel here, take that cap off, fill it up. You've got your pump, so you drop that pickup right down to the bottom. And then at the van, it can only go on the one way here, so you just push that in. And it does slot into the cap, so you can just drop the wee cap down. So once you've got that set up, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. Now you do have to make sure that you turn your water pump off when you go to refill this barrel to see your pump doesn't run dry. Because these caddies don't have a gauge, it's a good idea to make sure it doesn't get sort of quarter of the way empty. And when you go to fill up your caddy, you can put your pump just up in here just to stop it dragging on the ground. On the same side as your freshwater caddy, just behind your wheel here, this is your grey water outlet. So when you go to connect your caddy up, you want to remove the caps. You've got your grey water hose here. Pop that on and pull the cam locks around. Now these are new, so they can be a little bit stiff. Squeeze those on. 
pop those on. You've then got your wee pipe you can put in at the bottom as your breather. Once you've got that set up, make sure you've got the valves on your caddy open, but also the valve underneath the van here is in the open position as well. You do have a gauge on the top of your caddy so you can keep an eye on it. When it starts to get full and you want to empty it, turn the valve underneath the van off, just stops any residual grey water in the system coming out onto the ground. Turn off these valves, remove the pipe and your hose. You can then go and empty your grey water caddy. Underneath here, you do have a bungee cord. This is so you can strap your caddy to the tyre or the chassis just to stop it blowing around in the wind. Or you can pop your toilet cassette on here, strap it in and empty them both at the dump station. You do also have a little cap and spout. And this is designed so that when you go to empty the caddy, you can pop it on the bottom and it gives you a nice direct pour. So just up the top here, this is the fresh water tank for your toilet flush. Generally, depending on the model, it takes about 8 to 10 litres in here, but it is more of a visual reference. So when you see water in the trucks, you know it's full. Along with the water, you do also need this pink toilet chemical. So this is designed to help lubricate the seals in your pump and it also helps with smell as well. Underneath in the locker below, this is where your toilet cassette is. So you want to lift up this lever over this bridge and slide it out. So these three items here are operated inside the van so you don't have to worry about those. When you go to empty your caddy, turn your spout out. If you have a bit of trouble getting this cap off, you do have an air release valve at the bottom here that you can push and then you should be able to take that cap off no problem. Empty that out and then you've got a blue toilet chemical. Now you can measure this with the measurements on the cap. This again helps with smell but it's also designed to help break everything down so it's nice and easy to empty. So you can pop your chemical in there, bring it back to the van and slide it in and just make sure it clicks in behind there again. Now one other thing in this locker up the top here is this bung. Now when you pull this bung out it drains all the water out of your fresh water flush tank. It's really important to do this when you're storing the van especially over winter. Just stops your pump seizing and also prevents any frost damage. So just on the near side, so the door side of your van, this locker here is where your battery is stored. You don't really have to worry about that, it sort of does its own thing, but that is where it is if you ever need to get to it. On the left hand side here, this is where you plug in for your mains power. So you hold your cap back, there is a wee groove on the plug which corresponds to the one on the van, so it does only go on the one way. Push that in, release the cap, and as long as you've got it switched on at the source, then you'll have main power to the van. In your locker here you do have a wee groove so you can pop the cord in there, that way you can close up that lid and that keeps the weather out and stops anyone being able to get to your battery. Just inside your door here is your main control panel. So on the bottom right is your master switch, so when you flick that on that livens up all your 12 volt and it also activates the wee volt meter at the top here so you can check on your battery. The awning is for your awning light. The lights is for all your other lights, so any lights that you've left on in the van, when you turn this switch back on, they'll all liven back up. Underneath that is the switch for your water pump, so as long as you've got your barrel filled up and your pump plugged in, you can come in, flick that switch on and that'll liven up your pump. You may find, um, if you haven't used the van in a while, you will have to open up the taps just to get it to get any air out of the system and to pressurise. Just in the cupboard on... The opposite side of your control panel here is your solar charger. You don't have to worry about this, again it does its own thing. You can see that you've got the wee level going up in your battery, so that means your battery is charging. You do have a little sun up in the corner, so again that means that your battery is actively charging. You may find at points you will have a little moon symbol in the corner. That just means that the system is all connected, it's just that there's not enough light to charge your battery. Just above the little dresser area by the door here, this is the controls to run your room heater on 240 volt. So you've got your outer ring here, so you've got 2000 watts, 1000 watts at the bottom and 500 in the middle. It may be a wee bit hard to see but our green light should come up there when you select. And then you've got your temperature from 1 right round to 9 in the middle. 
Underneath here, this is the isolator switch for your room heater. So if you turn it on and you find that the green light is not there, just make sure the switch underneath is turned on. This here is your room heater unit. So up on the right here, these are the controls to run your 12 volt fan. So on the bottom, the wee circle is off. On the right is automatic. So you can select a fan speed from one right round to five. Select a temperature on either gas or 240 volt. And then there's temperature sensors in here. So the fan will kick in and out as it needs to automatically to maintain the temperature you've selected. And then on the far left is continuous. And when you've got the fan on, it will be pumping the warm air through ducts around the van. You can just run the fan on its own without gas or 240 volt and it'll just circulate room temperature air. On the left hand side here is to operate your room heater on gas. So generally when you run it on gas you want to turn it up quite high. You will hear it ticking, that's your room heater trying to ignite. So once you've turned it up quite high you want to push and hold this in. This is also your purge button as well as a temperature dial. While you're holding that in, you want to look in this wee viewfinder here. It's about this far down and about 25 mil in. There's a little piece of glass that matches the shape of this. So once you've got the angle right, you can have a bit of a look. While you're holding that purge button down, you'll have a bit of a bright blue flame. Hold the purge button for a couple more seconds. Once you release it, it should kick into a nice bright orange flame and then you know that your room heater has lit on gas. When you want to turn the gas off, you want to turn the dial to zero and then push it ever so slightly past that and it'll click your gas off. On the front panel of your seating here are the controls for your water heater. So the one up the top here is to run your water heater on gas. So you want to turn the outer dial to the gas symbol. You will hear a click underneath your front seat. That's the water heater trying to ignite and you'll get a wee green light. You can then adjust the temperature from 30 right round to 70. Now if you get a bit of a red light like we've got here, that means that your water heater has failed to ignite on gas. So what you need to do is turn it off, go and check your gas bottles are connected and turned on, check they have enough gas in them, but also make sure that you've removed that cover on the outside of the vent. Once you've checked those three things, you can then come back inside, turn that on and you should be good to go. Underneath that is to run your water heater on 240 volts. You can just flick that on and then your water heater will start to heat up. Underneath your front seating on the right hand side here, this is your water heater unit. Now you don't need to do anything with the unit itself. It does its own thing based on the controls you've selected. But there is a little yellow switch down here. Now when you're storing the van, again especially over winter, you need to come in, flick this up. And it's also a good idea to open up all your taps as well. This drains all the water out of your hot water cylinder and your general water system. Again, it prevents frost damage and anything bursting. When you go to use the van again, just make sure you flick this switch back down. Nothing drastic will happen if you don't. It just means that when you turn your water pump on and open up a tap, it'll pump all your fresh water out the bottom of the van. On the opposite side of the van, underneath the seats here, this is where your RCD and your MCBs are, as well as your 12 volt fuses. So if you're having any trouble with 12 volt or 240 volt, just come and have a look at these. Make sure no fuses have blown and that none of these have tripped. For your elements up the top here, you want to push the glass back nice and far. You've then got four dials on the side, so much like a barbecue, you want to push turn and hold at the highest flame and while you're holding that in you need to hit the igniter on the front of your oven and then once it's lit you can adjust the temperature from there and turn it back to the top for off when you finish using the hob you do need to make sure that all the elements and all these grill pieces are cool to the touch because it has been known in the past when you do put the glass down when it's still hot it will shatter with your oven here for your grill, the control is up on the left, so again push, turn and hold, hit your igniter and your grill will ignite along this tube down the middle. For your oven, exactly the same, push, turn and hold, hit the igniter and adjust your temperature and your oven will ignite along that little silver rail down the back.
Up the top here are the controls for your fridge. So this little dial on the right is your temperature dial. On the left here we've got your mode selector, so you've got mains power. As long as you've got mains power plugged in, your fridge will start to cool down. You've got battery. Now the battery option, you do need a 12 pin trailer plug. You can have an auto electrician do that for you as they also need to rewire your vehicle to match. What this is designed to do is you can cool the fridge down on either gas or 240 volt the night before. Then once you hook up the van you can switch it to battery and it will maintain the temperature that the fridge is currently at. It will not cool the fridge down from warm, your fridge already has to be cold and it will maintain the temperature that it's at. So that is an option that you can get done. And at the bottom here is gas. So when you're running the fridge on gas you want to select gas, come over to the right hand side here. Now this temperature dial is also your purge button so you want to push and hold that in. You then want to also push and hold your igniter in, you will start to hear the fridge click. While you're holding those two in you need to keep an eye on this little piece here. So as this little orange line moves it'll start to move into the green. Once it's in the green and it's held relatively steady, you can then release the igniter and the purge button. If it stays in the green, your fridge is lit and it's all good to go. If it starts to drop back down again, just hold that purge button and your igniter just for a wee bit longer until it settles. So this here is the inside of your toilet. So the bowl does swivel so you can pop it out of the way when you're using the shower and the vanity and adjust it to fit your legs in. Up the top here is your flush, so you lift that up, push it back down and it will flush into your toilet. You do have a little light indicator here that comes up when your toilet set is getting full. So once you've used the toilet, flushed everything, you can then open it up at the bottom. So pull that lever around, so you can open that up, flush everything away and then once you've finished using the toilet it's really important that you shut the toilet so just push the handle so that it's facing towards the wall there is a seal in there so that seals up so it prevents any smell but also the toilet cassette will not release from the locker unless the toilet is closed on the inside so if you go to empty your toilet cassette and find it resisting just hop back in the van and double check that the toilet is closed 